is ready to once again pass judgment on humanity based on today's Star Trek game, Star Trek 25th Anniversary for your Nintendo Entertainment System. Let's go ahead and take the game, let's pop it in my NES, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Star Trek 25th Anniversary was made by Interplay and published by Ultra Games, aka Konami. It carries a copyright year of 1991. Although there are games with the same name for both the Game Boy and the PC, all three are unique games. The manual opens with the following. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. On orders from Starfleet, the crew of the USS Enterprise was in the vicinity of Sigma Iosha, collecting data on strange disturbances in the local gravitational and magnetic fields. The fluctuations produced a mysterious hole in space, and as the hole grew in size, the Enterprise was nearly drawn into its center. Miraculously, at the last moment, a space distortion threw the Enterprise and her crew into the heart of uncharted space. Safe from harm for the time being, it is up to the Enterprise to return to the Iocean system and find a way to reverse this rip in space before it grows too large and the entire galaxy is annihilated. Star Trek 25th Anniversary is an adventure game patterned after old point-and-click computer adventure games for one player only with one standard mode of difficulty. You can save your game via a password you can get while on board of the Enterprise. From the bridge, you can also talk to Spock, Scotty, Bone, Sulu, Chekhov, and Uhura to get statuses from their stations. You can also select the map after the first planet to plot a new course to a new planet. Open communications to a nearby vessel or vessel, set red alert for battle stations, which you don't really actually need to do, it will happen automatically, or press a transporter to select the landing party. You could select two others to join you as Captain Kirk, from Spock, Bones, officers that specialize either in history, biology, or geology, or a security officer. Each one brings something different to the table. For instance, the geologist can help you locate dilithium crystals, while the biologist can give you vital information on life forms on the planet you're visiting. Throughout the game, you'll need to use all of them, but here's a hint, always bring Spock. On the planet's surface, use the D-pad to control Kirk, A to use a tricorder over objects you find, some of which you can pick up, and B to fire your phaser. Start brings up a menu screen where you can talk to other officers, transport back to the Enterprise, use items from your inventory, and change your phaser settings. Pressing select will show the health of your crew. The basic goal of the game is to solve various puzzles by using different officers and items, although from time to time you may need to use a phaser to defend yourself or to blast away at something. However, only Kirk and the security officer will use phasers. As is typical with this type of game, you'll need to use experimentation and exploration to figure out where to go and what to do next, which isn't always clear. Or you can look up a walkthrough online. During the game, you'll also have to take part in some battles with the Enterprise. Here the D-pad moves, A fires instant phasers, and B fires photon torpedoes which take a while to hit their target, and on the bottom of the screen is some battle information. Graphically speaking, this is a very nice looking game for an NES title, and for the most part it does a good job capturing the feel of the original series. Sound and music wise, fans of the series will notice some familiar tunes and sounds that are for the most part well done, but there are some annoying sounds as well. Family friendly wise, the game would most likely get an E for everyone rating if released today. Currently at PriceChine.com, the game has a value of $15 loose, $30 complete, and $124 new. So what did I think of Star Trek 25th Anniversary for the NES? As a fan of both Star Trek and point and click adventure games, I liked it. It has a nice Star Trek feel and it controls fairly well. The game also does a good job integrating characters and places from the series that fans will notice. And I'm very grateful for the password system, although one password it gave me didn't work quite right and ended up glitching out my game. However, all's not perfect. Sometimes when using a password, the game doesn't remember some of the tasks you already completed, leading to some unnecessary backtracking. It wasn't very clear what to do at times, but at least there are some walkthroughs online, which I did use. And if you're looking for action, you'll probably be disappointed. There's only one fight while on the Enterprise, and some mild phaser action while on foot. And the game isn't very long. If you know what you're doing, it can be completed in about an hour, give or take. So there isn't a lot of replayability. 
but it's still a journey I enjoy taking. To me, this is the kind of game that I wouldn't have wanted to pay full price to own, but it would have been a perfect weekend rental when it was released. So where am I going to rank Star Trek 25th Anniversary? I'm looking somewhere in the high 20s. I do like Heavy Barrel more at 21, but I will put this over Ice Hockey at 22. So out of the 56 games are now ranked for the NES, Star Trek 25th Anniversary is exploring the 22 position. Star Trek 25th Anniversary may not have a lot of replayability, and its gameplay style isn't for everyone, but Star Trek fans may want to give it a try at least for one playthrough, probably with a walkthrough nearby. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter, and click the bell so you don't miss any future videos. At this time, I'd like to thank David F., Johnny P., Unconventional, Ellis Greger, and Robert M. for nominating today's game and supporting the show on Patreon. If you'd like to sign up to support the show and gain access to exclusive perks, please go to patreon.com slash gamer. Thank you for giving me a little prior day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care and always have some extra dilithium crystals on hand.